morning, right? Yeah. Good morning, everyone. I'm Lucky Tesopoulos, um, uh, Deputy Executive Officer with the Engineering and Permitting Office here at the district. And I want to welcome you all to our special Permit Streamline Task Force subcommittee meeting. Um, uh, before we go through the self introductions, um, let me go through some housekeeping items here. Uh, so I would um, ask if you don't mind to turn off your phones or uh, convert them to silent or vibrate mode. Uh, our restrooms are out of these doors and to the right for both um, uh, ladies and men. And in the event of an emergency, uh, we may need to shelter in place or evacuate the building. In the event there's an evacuation, we are going to evacuate out of this door, uh, out to the backyard. And in case we need to shelter in place, um, then um, uh, in the event we have an earthquake, for instance, please drop, cover your head, and hold, hold on to your chair. With that, um, we want to go back to our meeting. So we have, um, uh, we are extremely excited today. Uh, we want to present a new tool, a new permitting tool that we've been working on for a while that will allow applicants to um, electronically submit their permit applications to us. And to the extent um, uh, that the facility is below certain threshold, the applicant will be able to get their permit online. Mm -hmm. So once you have compiled all the information, insert them in, in an hour, at your leisure, at the office that you are in, you will be able to print your permit. In the event you are exceeding our thresholds or you are close to a school, that application will probably come back to us, but you will still be able to transmit everything electronically. So we are trying to move up to the 21st century and further um, uh, simplify and um, expedite the permit processing. Uh, so we want to demonstrate that project, and we've been working with our friends uh, in information management, and they are going to be uh, demoing the um, the new tool. But before we go to this, perhaps we can go around with the self introduction uh, because there are some unfamiliar faces. <laughs> Let me start with the gentleman to my right, uh, my deputy here. Uh, Amir Desmarx, engineering and permitting, SCMD. Bill Pierce, Boeing. Bill Lamar, executive director of the California Small Business Alliance. Ron Moskowitz, ADEO over Information Management. Excuse me. Uh, Saad Karam, uh, Information Management, Systems Program Supervisor. Or McEwen, Information Management. Paul Wright, Information Management, Production. Evangelina Ferrer with Engineering and Permitting. David Rothbard, Los Angeles County Sanitation Districts. Let's start with that later. Solid Dr. German, Engineering Oil Company. Latinza Navarro, GNM Oil Company, um, a Compliance Assistant. Stephanie Ferguson, I'm here with Afro LLC, also known as United Oil for some of you, <coughs> do compliance regulatory affairs and uh, not have to see them. engineering and permitting. permitting. Uh, David Dono, engineering and permitting. David Houck, engineering and permitting. William Thompson, engineering and permitting. Ryan Rand, Advanced Energy Operations. Dan Dev, engineering and permitting. Al Baez, the ACT Group. Good morning, Kim White, AQMD Media Office. Fantastic. Welcome to you all. So, um, so we can, unless you have any questions, um, perhaps we can dive in into the demonstration. And um, uh, Aura and Saad are going to be doing uh, the honors. They spent countless hours with their team, along with uh, Ron Moskowitz, in developing this program. And I'm pretty sure they're going to like it, uh, especially if something that you'll be able to use in your office, at your home, and be able to print uh, uh, your permit there. Uh, feel free to ask whatever questions and interrupt us. Uh, this is our first time that we are demonstrating this product. Um, we may be able to repeat those uh, because I'm pretty sure there will be other interested parties. Um, and we won't mind, you know, repeating this uh, exercise sometime in the near future. Um, so with that, I want to turn it on uh, over to... Laura, and uh, please do the honors. Okay, good morning. I've got a little bit of nervous energy this morning for some reason, so I'm going to stand up and hope that that helps. I'm going to get on this side of the screen. Uh, I think it goes up on this side. 
That's a real fucker. Again, my name is Ora McEwen, and I'm the Technology Implementation Manager uh, and Information Management responsible for application development. And partnering with me today is Saad Karam, who's the IT supervisor and project lead responsible for the permitting application software development, uh, or project lead, rather, for the permitting application software development project. So um, today we're going to be demonstrating the uh, permit application processing gas station module. And this is going to be very similar to the dry cleaner and spray booth modules that have been demonstrated at, at earlier um, streamlining committee meetings. Um, the goal today is, from an IT perspective, is to showcase the features and functions of the actual permit processing application. Any discussion on the actual gas station business process itself will be addressed by uh, the engineering team. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're, we're going to be demonstrating the, the module from our staging environment today. So there will be going to be some minor differences between the staging environment and the production environment. And where relevant, I'll point those differences out to you. And you might see some minor differences in the um, performance as well. And where relevant, I'll point those differences out to you as well. Um, to optimize today's demo, uh, we're, going to, we're going to do a combination of actually uh, a live demonstration with live data entry, a live demonstration with some pre-populated screens so that you don't have to watch us do all the data entry on all the different screens, and we're going to augment it just a little bit with some PowerPoint slides. Um, so, okay, so let's get started. Um, this is the access link to the application. You can actually place this link one or several places on our web page. Um, I, I imagine we're going to place it either, um, I think we have the link up there to our web page. Did we close it? We we'll close it. We we'll close it. Um, there's, a, there's permitting screens, there's online tools, <coughs> there's probably a number of different places we can launch this application from. But once we launch it, if you click on that side, you'll take you to the, it'll take you to the login screen. If you have a login and password, you can log into the application directly. If you do not have a login and you need to register, you would click to register. And then you would come to this screen. And we're not going to spend the time registering today, but Saad, if you'll open up the PowerPoint presentation. Okay. If you needed to log in and register, you would come to this screen. You would uh, create a username, a password. Um, put in a valid email address, some personal information, which would be your name and address. And, and um, in the staging environment, the CAPTCHA is disabled. But in the production environment, you would have to respond to a CAPTCHA, uh, respond to terms and conditions, and then click register. Upon clicking register, you would get a screen that would say, thank you for registering. It would, in, it would instruct you to go to your email address and click a link that would validate that you had given us a, a correct email address and bring you back to go to the dashboard. If you click to the next screen. Once you come back, you'd be given a, you would have to tie a valid facility ID to your newly created login. So you'd be given an option to search for an existing facility or to create a new facility. If you were to create a new facility, You'd be given a set of instructions to gather certain information to create that new facility. After reading these instructions, you'd get, gather the information that you needed, come back, and you would enter the information that you needed to create your new facility. Your facility information, your equipment location. It actually requires three um, addresses to create a new facility. Your equipment location is the most important. Then you'd actually have to enter information for your permit contact address and your billing contact address, you can actually click and use the same address for all three locations. If, if those were unchecked, then you'd be allowed to enter those addresses separately. Um, more information would be whether or not it's a sole proprietorship corporation or whatever, and then whether or not it's my or minority owned female, a little bit more information about your facility. Then you'd be given an opportunity to view the summary information and seeing if the summary information is correct, 
you'd again have to respond to a capture because we don't want you or someone coming in creating a bunch of different facility IDs. Upon responding to the capture and clicking submit, you would be given a facility ID. That facility ID would then be associated with your login and registration, and then you would be ready to go. So if you can close out that, go back to the application. Okay. Now, back at the application, if you can just actually put in a, a login and password, we'll go into the live demonstration. So, pardon me? We're going to go to the dashboard. We're going to go to the dashboard. This is the application filing link that you will click on to get to the, to the actual application and then entering the data. And again, like I said, we're operating from our staging environment, so it's taking up just a little bit of time, but this should take you to your actual dashboard. And once you get to the dashboard, this is your dashboard screen just to let you know what, what facility you have access to and what applications you already have in the system that you're working on. Okay. We already have one in here that's been pre-populated, but before we go there, so why don't you click on new application? Okay, when you first go into the application, if you're going to create a new application, this would be the three pieces of equipment that you could choose from. Today we're going to select gasoline service station. On selecting continue, uh, you'd be presented with a set of general instructions that would show you how the application works, give you a, a bit of information on how the toolbar works, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that when you see the actual toolbar give you an idea how much time you're going to spend, and that's one of the reasons we're going to do a, a little bit of pre-population, because we don't want to take the whole 45 minutes that it might take to do the data entry today. But it just gives you a general set of instructions on what it's going to take uh, to use the tool today. And um, after you read your general instructions, you would uh, click to continue. And um, so I want you to talk to them about the, about the mapping. The first thing that pops up here is, uh, is information requesting ma um, um, from our mapping product instructions as to how to tell us where your actual equipment is located and so this is a brief instruction telling you please you know look at where your equipment is and pin tell us give us uh, where the equipment is located when you click OK we are going to go to the map uh, and our, uh, based on the address, there's a pin that's been placed in here for uh, originally. Based, this is obviously a, not a, a, a proper address and not a not piece of equipment. So I'm going to go to our gas station, which is right here, and I'm going to pin my uh, pin. And tells you, gives you some instruction, tells you, you know, um, is this really what you want to do? This is true where your equipment is, and if you say okay. The pin drops, and that's exactly where it is. And if I zoom in, you can see that that's the, uh, the gas station that we're talking about. And this is uh, information needed for uh, geographical needed, geographical information needed that we get from you to specifically know how far your emissions are. In actual cases, this would be a, uh, a stack information of some sort or a piece of equipment that is actually located in, in the area. In the case of a gas station, it's obviously a bigger item, so we just want to know where it's at, where it's at, and, uh, and so on. So, Saad, on, on that, where that pin, where that pin is, is, is that the, is that the gas station, or is that, let's say, the pumps on there, and, and then, and then the distance, the the pumps, the pumps. and then the distance. It's the vents or the, the dispensers. Yeah. Okay, so that's, that's where the, that's where the pin is. Then. Correct. Right. And it's very important because, as you know, we need to use that information for primarily two purposes. One, we want to calculate risk associated with the facility, and we want to make sure that you stay below our thresholds. So we use that pin to calculate that distance. So the 1,000 feet is right. measured from... And the other one is the 1,000 feet. We want to right. see you know, how close are you to a school and whether it will need... Uh, a special public noticing or not. 
If you're less than, I mean, I mean more than 1,000 feet away, no problem, no harm, no foul. Uh, but we still need to distance to calculate toxic risk, you know, to the nearest receptor, whether it's uh, uh, business, commercial, or residential. So part of what the program does in this case is actually after you do the pen and save, the program goes behind the scene and actually looks for schools, uh, residences, businesses in the neighborhood, and specifically schools, to see whether there are any within a certain distance, a thousand feet, or uh, as, as required by the rule. And if it finds some, it will, we will point them out to you as, as we go through. Okay. Now, let's go back to the status bar now that you can see it. The status bar at the top indicates that there are eight modules or eight really steps that you need to go through to finish your filing. The Form 400A, the Form 400PS, which is uh, plot plans and stack information, 400 CEQA for the California Environmental Quality Act, the Form 400E11, any supplemental documents, payment information, summary and submission. Mm -hmm. And then side, if you go down a little bit, or up, yeah, up, I'm sorry. Now within each form, then there's several pages within each form that you have to complete to complete that module. So for Form 400A, you have to go through operator information, facility business information, application information, and authorization. So if the, if the circle is completely open, that means you have not started that module yet. If it's half orange, it means that module is in progress. And if it's green, check, that means that module is complete. So the reason these modules are this way is means the information actually has been populated through the database. Uh, so right now, we are in the form 400A module, um, and the other modules have yet to be started. Can I ask a quick question? Can you jump between those modules, or do you have to finish 400A before you go to? You have to finish 400A. Yeah, you have to finish uh, each form one by one until you get to. After you're done, you can jump back and forth at that point anytime to, to make corrections if need be. But you have to start in that process. Okay. So now, as we, far, I'm sorry. sorry. <coughs> it was here we were going to jump back. Right? Yeah. Okay. So rather than go through each one of these and have you watch us do data entry, data entry by data entry by data entry. So if you can go back to the dashboard and pick up the one that we've pre-populated, we can just go through. We're not going to skip any screens, but we're just going to skip the steps of the individual data entry and show you the screens. I'm a two-finger typist, so it takes a little bit. So this way. <laughs> but we did want to show you that the the, 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 the the positioning of the pen and then just talk a little bit more in general. So this is the application that we're going to go through right now. <clears throat> okay, so we've done the pen. And we'll go next. So, where are we? You're moving. We are at uh, facility business information. information. So, anything that's gray, it's been populated from the database, so you can't change it. Anything that's white, you have the ability to overtype it and update the information if needed. So, if you go next. Now, at this point, once you've entered, move on. Once you've entered operator information facility, once you've entered the third step application information after you've saved that, that's when you're, go back up a little bit so they can see the, that's when your application number has been created. Okay, and then, if you had had a notice of violation and had clicked yes, you would have been requested to. Um, you would have been given a. You would have been given a notice that you would not have been able to get an app of an application online. You'd have been requested to enter the notice number, and uh, it would have been become an application filing. Um, so you wouldn't have lost any of the information that you entered, but you wouldn't have been able to get a permit online. Uh, but because the entry was no, you were able to continue. Even if the NOV has been settled? No, it has, if it has been settled, no problem. We'll go through. Oh, okay. This is only for open. If it was open. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. And, and NTCs don't count. NTCs no. do not count. No. Okay. All right. 
And so here is where you enter your uh, what type of equip what type of equipment you have, what type of application you're submitting. It says a new construction uh, application. You're right. It is a little harder to follow when they're populated. The dates are logical, so if you you cannot enter a start date before today. You cannot enter a <coughs> end date before the start date. And you cannot enter, uh, I'm sorry, you cannot enter a construction date before the construction start date, and you cannot enter a uh, operation start date before the construction end date. So if you were to click on the calendar dates, they would be grayed out that would prevent you from entering invalid dates. Now this, this should be fun for, the, for those of you who want to start the project next week. They can get their permit today and start next week. <laughs> <laughs> Next, uh, where are we now? Um, this is authorization. Authorization. And we're saying, yeah, we want to review the permit prior to issuance, claiming confidentiality of data. Uh, the main thing they're looking for here is a valid email address. Make sure we have a responsible official. And this would be... The only thing I don't like in this approach, Sean, is I, 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 I lose track of when we I would have changed track. from one form to the next, so you have to help me out here. Yeah, so we're now on, we just finished the 400A, obviously all these have been pre-populated, and we're going to go to the 400 PS form right now, which is the uh, stack information. Okay, stack information would have had two pages, one with location data, one with admission release parameters. Right. So we're currently right now, location data, we're on location data. So you would have had to respond to uh, the zoning classification information and whether or not there was a school. Now we have a, a, a um, our GIS information would have would have checked for a school. Had there been a school, it would have located the school and it would have. Uh, it would have been listed down here listed. at the bottom. So uh, it would automatically bring all schools within a certain distance. Um, uh, for you to see, and if it's specifically if there's one within a thousand feet, that would list that um, right there for you. Uh, if you if the RGS information did not find any, like it said in this case, no school found in, in nearby. Um, but you, as an operator, know of a school that we haven't we don't know about. You are required at this point to enter this information um, with uh, how far is it is it from your facility, and we'll give you the opportunity to do that. Right. Is, is that measurement done by like, like Google? The uh, automatic measurement is done by a geographic uh, system, uh, which is not through Google, it's through a third party called uh, Digital Map Files. But that's uh, what we do, yeah. And you haven't seen any inconsistencies, I guess, between? No, it's been pretty close. Uh, I mean, depending on where you drop the pin. Sometimes the, you know, we're talking 10, 15 feet, something like this, 20 feet, not a big deal, but... Uh, yeah, it's, been, it's been consistent. Okay. It's, and of course, no system is perfect, you know, and this is why we were asking the question. In the event, uh, the program doesn't identify a school, but you know that there is a school. That there, it gives you the opportunity you know, to list that. It's very important that we are accurate here because we've got to do the public notice and there are no ifs and buts, you know, so we can not skirt that requirement. Um, but generally speaking, you know, they're fairly consistent. So. How's the outer boundary of the school identified with the mapping program? We have a, 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 um, a parcel layer included in our mapping. And as you notice at the beginning uh, of the program where you saw the, when we pinned it in, there was a yellow uh, the ownership, ownership uh, kind of a layer, a, a parcel of where the, uh, uh, the station is located. And there's, we have uh, all kinds of layers, all the parcels. We, we get those from the counties of uh, you know, Los Angeles and Orange uh, through that, our third party provider. And it's to that, that's where we measure the distances exactly from that pin to the next parcel uh, as required by the rule. And that's to the property line of the school? To the property line of the school. Of the school. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want one pin per parcel, correct? For example, thing. we have two canopies on you know opposite sides of the parcel. It's just Can the one. It's, it's just one. the one for gas station. We are only giving one permit per per gas station. Right. Okay. So just. Uh, 
if it was a spray booth or anything else, you'd have multiple spray booths and you'd have to have different permits anyway. So each permit would have would require a pin. So we can select no, so that goes away. Next. And that will take us to the uh, second part, the emission the release release parameters. parameters. This. Um, stack information as well as Receptive distances, those were calculated. Yeah, those were calculated based on what we were talking about as far as residence and business and you know, um, what we call um, sensitive receptors. And, and that's it. So this is automatically activated. And then well, once this is done, you go next. That's your PS form is done. And as you press next, it saves the previous frames, Correct. what you enter. You can, you can always save and exit and, and come back and pick your session up and continue, but each time you press next, it automatically saves the information that you have just finished in and right? takes you to the next screen. And how long do they have between screens if they want to take a break? About 20 minutes before it times out. That's enough for a Coffee. Starbucks break, I guess. <laughs> okay, so now we're at the um, CEQA. CEQA. So, so the CEQA has CEQA two sections, the, uh, the exemption section right, and the uh, review for impact section. We start by the, the uh, exemption section where you're asked questions about whether you're exempt from CEQA. And if you are, you'd select exempt and as a result, you don't have to file any more, inf get any more information. Um, but if you're not, then you select no, and you go on to the next section. And under uh, the next section of CEQA is the uh, review for impacts. And in here, there is a, as you know, the CEQA form is pretty long, has lots of questions that you need to go through and ask, answer yes or no. If you answer yes to any of those questions, you'll be required to file a CEQA form uh, or a CEQA document that you would upload with your permit. But once you are subject to CEQA, you uh, definitely will not be getting a permit online. If you're not, then you can go on further. But you have to select no to all of them and move on to, uh, in order to go next. You cannot leave anything empty without going uh, to the next page. Okay, well, I'm selecting next, <coughs> now you would be done with and let's see, you're done with your SQL and then you move on to 400 million. Like I said, had we, if we were doing it all live, you would see, like I said, instead of the green checks, um, at this point, the SQL would have gone green check and the form E11 would go, would go half orange. But now at this point, like I said, you, you, you're going through, uh, in a live, you'd be going through the one, two, three, four, is it four, or is it more, five? You'd be going through these five screens to enter the all the necessary information for the for the form 407 starting with the uh, operating schedule or the business type in the operating schedule and just leave it at retail and go ahead and select next and we can change this to 24 hours a day so it's a gas station sometimes we can model instructions really well that's okay <laughs> He's being independent. And this section is the underground tank section, and where you're asked to enter all your underground tanks, um, you can enter one, two, or three, or as many as you have. Based on, uh, in this case, where I've entered three, previously entered three tanks, the information on the tanks are uh, everything that you see here, whether it's new or old or existing. Uh, whether it's methanol compatible, semi-rigid piping. I'll show you if we're trying to enter a new tank, these are the information that we are required. We're required, uh, you, you'd enter them this way. You'd select whether it's new or existing or removed or <coughs> if you're processing a uh, alteration and whether it's methanol compatible, whether it's stored below ground in a vault, whether it remote, has a remote fill or uh, semi-rigid piping. You answer to all these questions, you tell us how many compartments does the tank have, 
They have one or multiple, obviously. Um, most underground tanks are one, but above ground tanks have multiple compartments sometimes. And once you say, once you add it, and I'm gonna we're on, yeah, go so back add and say, one already, we're just gonna go ahead and. We're just uh, we're, we're not gonna add, add it. So we just we have three tanks already included uh, in the process. So these are this is your tank information that you enter in here, and uh, I'm gonna close this. Go on to the next section. Then they should ask about what the above next session is about above ground tanks. No. Again, if you uh, you can say no that you don't have any, or if you do have some, you can just enter the above ground information tank the same way. And close. We're not going to have one for this demonstration. We'll go next. Nozzle information, it's all we've already added a nozzle, so we can just anything that's already calculated. We've already added a set of eight nozzles in this case, and uh, the uh, throughput of 400,000 gallons, 4,800,000 gallons a year. Um, and uh, we're saying that there are eight new positions, since this is a new facility, fueling positions. We have four sets of nozzles that dispenses two fuels and four sets of nozzles that dispenses three fuels um, for a total of eight, eight nozzles. And a uh, number of new dispensers, four of them. And so this is all the information that you do on as far as nozzles and fuel throughput. Once you're done with that, you click next and you're on to your summary page. The summary page shows all the information that you just entered, the tank information, the nozzle information, uh, the uh, product information, as well as the uh, dispensers and uh, everything else that you've entered. This is your chance at this point to review all this information, look at it, make sure it's accurate. If you're not, if you're not comfortable with it, you have something you want to change, you have the option to go back to any one of these forms, change anything that you want to change, go back and, and modify the data. And uh, you can you can do that up to prior to submission. You can always do a modify your uh, if you're not uh, sure if you if you have a mistake. If say you find out that you have ten nozzles instead of eight, you can always add extra nozzles as you go through. Once you're done with the review, you click next, and you're done. Now you're on to. Okay, we have a facility that allows you to upload supplemental documents if needed. I don't believe any supplemental documents are required. Um, so you can click, select next, since there's no supplemental documents, and that, that will take you now to payment. Um, we have a third-party provider that will allow you to make payments by either e-check or credit card. Your fees have been calculated, and here it says your total fees due and the paid amount is, is zero, so you haven't made a payment yet. You can make a payment. For making a payment, you actually now will kind of shell out and go to our our payment module that's used by all of our applications needing to make a payment. Again, you can select credit card or e-check. And then an invoice will be prepared. And the bond selecting checkout. It will take you to another screen where you will enter your credit card information. Now, if, if, let's say if public noticing is, is required, uh, or, or there's any, any, any other, mm -hmm. anything else, CEQA, uh, you, you, com you, complete the, you complete this application form, but you're not going to get your permit that day. Uh, will it, it, the system won't, won't be able to issue an invoice then, right? Uh, because public noticing is, 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 is going to be uh, an additional an additional charge, additional fee. Okay, so so what do you get? Like a subtotal? So, uh, Bill, uh, or the, the way payment? the program works is that you know with, with any application, there is an initial application filing right. fees. 
So it will accept the initial application filing fees okay. as part of your submittal to the agency. Then when the CEQA or the public notice is finished, just like similarly with other type of the processes that we do, then you get an additional invoice that will be mailed to. Okay, and, and that, that's a separate process. That as would be a separate process. That's a separate process. Right, absolutely. So you're still going through this all the way through here, and then it won't allow you to print if you're close within 1,000 feet of the school. So right. that information will electronically come to us, and we'll work with the applicant to basically take them through the public process, that public notification process, and then there'll be, as Amiwa is indicating, a separate invoice for it. Yeah, so it's with this fee plus whatever else whatever. may, may be required. Right. Right. But that invoice you can also pay online. Yes. Your online payments. Like your public noticing fee? Yeah. Yes. Right. It'll be a separate invoice, but, but you can look it up because the, the key thing, and pretty amazing thing, I think, is that you, in the early part of the data entry, you get an application number. And so you can track it all the way through. <coughs> and also, it'll update our corporate database so you can call anybody and we can look it up in hats even though you filed you started it online so that's your control number then all the way yeah, through the all process. Way. okay so i, I had a quite a general question on this so i mean if you're not allowed to pay online i mean the previous step can you generate the invoice at that point in time and then, so then we can pay by check, or you can pay with e-check. E-check. Well, you know, we're, talk, we're still operating in the dark ages. So. <laughs> he's, 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 he's with that small, he's that small business he over said. there. <laughs> but the question is whether whether it's an allowable option. But whether you can generate that invoice, so then we can submit it. No. Not when not so this will not yeah. allow that. Right. Okay. You gotta pick either e checks or uh, any of those cards. Unless you wanna stick it up to the paper forms and then you can <laughs> pay with whichever means you wanna pay. Put it on your card, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> no, they take away all our credit cards. No. That's more of a, a business process than a technical limitation. Um, because yeah. there's there's an online vouchering process. I'm sure they can, like I said, it's it's, it's not a technical limitation. It's a, it's yeah. a business process. But I think that the idea here is we're trying to streamline the whole yeah. process, right? So, but wouldn't, wouldn't but, but I mean, to file online and then mail in a check is kind of... But for some of these large companies, uh, Edison, for instance, and I don't know about Boeing, mm -hmm. that have their own gas pumps on site, mm -hmm. they, they would have to go through this same process, though, wouldn't they? Or not. It's always an option. You can always file with paper. I mean, there's no requirement to file online. This is just being presented as an option to bring us into the 21st century and to expedite applications. And we're hoping that this is the way, this, this will be the norm. Right. right. And I, I want to say one of the design objectives that we had as the engineering team was usability and client acceptance. So in the registration, all you need to do is put your name and verify your email address, and that's it. And that's a conscious choice to help make this more usable and user-friendly. Uh, we, we had this discussion, I think, with the dry cleaners yeah, or correct. something like that. And, you know, maybe now it's it's optional. But somewhere down the road, it's it's going to be mandatory. Right? Right. Correct. I mean, yeah. that's the idea because it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to have to keep in two business models. Sure. Uh, but initially, uh, as we do with hand holding and shepherding applicants through, we may have to maintain the two business models. Yeah. But at some point, we'll get rid of the paper forms altogether and go into this. Yeah. And these online modules are for minor sources. They're not set up for facilities with large emissions. So, because that puts them to another whole program which we're not ready to release. Yet. That's just still deal with that. Well, we'll but eventually, we'll, eventually we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll get that. Yeah. All right. So, give you a lot of fine printery. You accept the terms of the conditions. 
continue. Then now you're presented with a convenience fee because this is a third party provider. So that's the amount that's due, the convenience fee, and the total amount that will be billed to your credit card. And if you pay, you are paying through e check, there's no convenience fee. E check, there's no convenience yeah. fee. Yeah. I think it costs us 27 cents and right. we're willing to. So we'll leave that. You know, but the credit card goes to a third party, third party. Officer, so they charge the fee. Fidelity information. We don't have a choice on that. We, we don't have, have a choice, choice on, on that. that. Yeah. Is that a flat convenience fee? Thirty-seven, thirty-six. Or is it a it's, a, it's a percentage. percentage. Mm -hmm. I think it's two. But since, but since our fees are static, I mean that's the, the, the essentially yes. Yes. It will always be thirty-seven. Yeah. Yeah. Or thirty-seven. Until we raise our fees. fees. Yes. So this is your receipt. So you can print it, view it as a PDF, and it also goes to your email. And if you click finish, it should return you to the processing model and you should indicate now that your fees are paid. So now the fees have been paid and the balance is zero. So now you should be able to, so now your payment before the payment was not, pardon me? Or I think we need to add one more thing as far as payments go about that convenience fee because it is not charged by us, if somehow you need a refund, that that convenience fee is non-refundable. That's something that would actually go on generically on the page because it applies to anyone who, um, who uses the payment module. We can add it over point a page. Okay. That's not, that doesn't matter. Okay, and if you, I don't know if you noticed on the progress but before the payment was not populated as complete, the payment is now complete. So, payment success, <clears throat> and if we go next, we should go half orange into the 407 review. So now we are getting ready to review everything that we have done up to this point. And again, because this is not stage, uh, the production will actually be a lot faster. Okay. Now, if we've done everything right, all this will be green. <laughs> ah, look at that. <laughs> Magic. Magic. <laughs> okay. That means that you're in compliance with all the rules and you will be able to get your permit online if you wanted to read the, the uh, any of the, if you click on any of the rules and it will give you some information on what was evaluated in that rule, which you're in compliance with all the rules, that's the rule evaluation. So we can click, click next. And then for the uh, emission calculation, it will give you information on or details for each of the sections. Question? Yes. Uh, on the previous uh, screen, what happens if you're not in compliance with all the rules? If you're not in compliance, then this becomes a, a filing because you will not be able to get your permit online and, uh, and an engineer will have to uh, mm -hmm. for perform further yeah. evaluation. Within 1,000 uh, uh, feet of the school, that 212, you know, will probably pop up, you know, and say, you know, hey, work with us. Uh, it will tell you, actually, if you're in red, you will get a different set of language as to say you're out of compliance for one reason or another, or, or that the engineer will have to perform some further evaluation before you can get your permit. But you would not be able to get your permit online. As far as rules, just say hypothetically you're opening up a rule that's going to say it's 900 feet instead of 1,000. How would you update this such that you don't have this in contradiction? to a rule and someone gets a permit that now is not going to be valid. Well, how are we going to maintain this? You mean if the rule changes? You Correct. Mean? That guy right there. <laughs> that, that guy will have to you know, start working over time and um, uh, start updating you know, the program. Any changes, to any rule changes, yeah. or any other things, we're, this, is a, this is our product. Yeah. Right? We developed it. We will change it as necessary. Yeah. So that's, that's the Achilles heel, the, you know, the automation. 
uh, unfortunately, you know, the computer logic is very rigid, right? Um, so we've got to be very strategic in what kind of modification we'll be asking through the board, you know, in terms of amending our rules and changing some of the parameters because what, any acceptance of this will have some ramification on our program. So I'm hoping, you know, if there will be changes, there will be important changes and not necessarily minutiae that will, um, you know, bottleneck, you know, the system. But um, regardless, what, whatever it is, you know, we'll have to amend that program. What's the living program? Yeah. So from this point, once we release it, we have to right. keep track of everything that's happening. There would be a philosophy of you could turn this offline yes. until you yeah. update it. Right. And also, what you have to keep in mind, those things you cannot do them overnight, the changes, you know. So there will be a time lag between, you know, a rule gets amended and this program gets updated. And unfortunately, that gray area, we may have to fall back uh, to the paper forms. Or alternatively, uh, there'll be a, a time lag uh, as to when the new per, um, rule amendment gets introduced. It, it goes into effect. But it still can be used as for fighting, electronic fighting purposes. Around the first of the year, I think it was, my, as I get older, my memories plays tricks on me. But around the first of the year, the Alliance, WISPA, and Sioma weighed in on this the emission difference factor. between the emission yes. factor. I know Danny was, was part yes. of that. Mm -hmm. Has that ever been resolved? Still work. Still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You guys were supposed to shake it. hands and... Yeah, we're still working. Oh, yeah. So, what, which one are we using now? The, yours? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But that change is, relatively speaking, you know, simple thing to do. It's just in the number change. That's it's, transparent to the yeah. end user. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, right. We'll still have to go back because all the emission factors are pre-populated here. But that program change is relatively speaking easy to do. If we have to change the logic, that's when things get a little bit more complicated. Okay. Yeah. A raw number can probably just be changed by an administrator. Uh, through a table change in the administrative screen. A logic change is something that's good. where the program has to be changed. Right. Right. Okay. But that, that's not going to, that, that difference between the two agencies isn't going to affect this. Yeah, we can wait for CARB, you know, so we want to go live with this, you know, sooner rather than later. So we are going to go with what we have at hand, um, and we'll deal with it when CARB makes a, a decision. Okay. So you can review all of your summary values, select next, and now you're into your permit preview. This is an actual copy of your permit that you will be getting online, so it's exactly your equipment description, your nozzles, everything that we've given that, that's, that you've entered, and your conditions as well, all of your conditions in here. And there's lots of them that you probably know about already. If a site um, doesn't have a throughput, will and you're um, doing a modification at a site, will it now generate a throughput for that site? It will impose a throughput condition on every single application. Because I know we have some sites that we do not have, we do mm -hmm. not have a throughput limitation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, that's going to change if you go through this system. Yeah. Okay. And the trick is basically that condition will come at a level that will ensure you that you stay below the 10 million risk at the nearest receptor. Okay. 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 So can you also scroll up that red tape box at the top? Up to the... Yeah, that one. The one that says, please review carefully. Please review carefully. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll give you that warning three, three more, two more times. Uh, can we <laughs> read the second line too? <laughs> please review carefully. Revisions to either equipment description or permit conditions require submission of a new approval. Okay. And new payment? And new payment, new yeah. application. You might want to <laughs> add that. So that, uh, pay attention <laughs> to that. And I will give you the warning two more times. <laughs> <laughs> so on that point, 
let's say you go through you're an operator and you're expecting that your equipment is going to be in compliance and it's permit to construct and you're purchasing the equipment from someone who told you it's going to be in compliance. You fill out the uh, application online and then you get one of the areas in non-compliance. At that point, are you stopped with the fee or can you, what can you do at that point? Again, the application will come in-house. Yeah, but then you pay your fee. Well, and let's say you say, well, yeah. now I found out this equipment is not complying with these rules. Maybe I want to look at purchasing a different equipment. Yeah, now I've changed my mind, but now I'm committed because I'm into the system. Correct, but I think we'll give you an opportunity not to ask for a permit. So you will get to see this one. And then but there's a point that you said, okay, you know, I'm going to stop, I'm going to give APMB a call, and then they're going to bring down the case in So you don't have to go finish everything and get a permit in there. You can stop at that point and say, you know, I have a problem. So I guess that's my question. Do you get charged once you have the permit in here? Or because you still have an application filing fee? Once we go to the, right. Once we go to the, when we evaluate your application, whether you're in compliance or not, that's the point where we charge you. So if you get a hit that it's one of the rules the equipment's not in compliance with one of the rules, then you're automatically committed and you're locked into the fee and there's no way you can get that fee back? There is no difference between this program and finding... Right, even when you file the paper route, um, we are going to ask for the check first, right? You know, well, you know. yeah, but when you file the paper route, there's still some negotiation with engineers who might call you and say, hey, this application... You is can still do that. Denial, yeah. Unless you can do this and sure. that. And you still have some... Wiggle room, right. maybe, you know. Yeah, I don't know what team you're dealing with, <laughs> but that's not the situation with my team. If you if you apply for something and something that doesn't comply, that's a denial because the engineering the engineer has done the evaluation. Um, so this does the same thing. But I mean, hopefully, it doesn't. There's no communication between the engineer and the applicant until the end. I mean. When I was working at the district, I didn't want to do a denial. Oh. Most engineers do not want to do a denial. Like I said, I don't know what team you're dealing so, with, but, but we okay, don't have any problem. Okay, you need unit back then. But anyways, if I see a red flag and I get this application in, and you know maybe the guy needs to do some modifications to the equipment or, or do something, we would call them up and say, hey, we, we see a red flag on your account. You're absolutely right. But with these programs, there's not much of a modification you can do. So yes, uh, uh, Amir, at this point, though, um, they haven't generated the patents. They can go back to the price points. I think what you're right. saying is so you need to look at the dimensions of the equipment that you're planning on purchasing before you construct it. You, if you go back to the E11 form, can change those parameters at this point in this program because we haven't finalized it. That's the step that R hasn't gotten. Da yet. David, is this something that maybe a disclaimer on that on the? Uh, oh, that's what it says on this system. At the top. That's the I can't read that. <laughs> the non-written non instructions. If you go, if you scroll, scroll to the top next, please review. No, no. Uh, it's very important. Please repeat. It's more important than the other important. Ones. They <laughs> review the equipment description and permit conditions for relevance and accuracy and make any correction to your application as needed by clicking on the applicable form from the horizontal status bar above and saving any changes before reviewing the screen again prior to proceeding to submittal. So if you put in your parameters and say, oh, uh, maybe I don't need three things, I don't need two. Uh, then you go to the form E11 and make those changes because you have to construct it. You're just applying for the authority to um, And that's how, uh, I think that's what you're trying to get at. Uh, the same thing with the um, dry cleaning module. If the equipment that you selected initially that you thought you were going to purchase, and then you go through this process and you find, oh, I'm at this one, I don't really need that much, or maybe I over, I'm overestimated my production, said why well, I, I, I really can live with a small, uh, lower production threshold, I would go back to my, I think it's E17 form, and make those changes to be reflective of what you plan on doing that would then show that you're in compliance as opposed to something that needs additional verification. 
Is, does that answer your question? Yeah, but you know, and that's what I thought. But my sense is that then a small business, once you engage this process, <coughs> basically you're you're locked in. Has, has this ever, ever happened to you? Because you're planning no. on submit to do something. Is it likely to? No, because um, we do a lot with Randy, and if we encounter any problem, like he's very good at answering yes. emails, picking up the yeah. phone, and he can revert the process or do whatever he needs for me to either finish the process or whatever he needs. Right, but this is an electronic Randy. That's how <laughs> yes, I know. I can this only is, think this of is nowhere near as responsive as Randy. <laughs> the, yeah. the point of no return is coming up in a couple screens. Oh wow! Right. You'll see. No, no, no. <laughs> this is just a warning. No, no, I think I think that's David's point. Is I mean, you, you you're right. You have committed to. I mean, the only way I took your question to be is if you just just recognize that your piece of equipment does not need a permit at all. So, well, so once you once you know, paid, this would be this would be analogous to the paper filing our current system that the engineer has maybe started the process and and this is the point where maybe the applicant would say hey I need two tanks not three um, and you know the engineer can make that change in the current process that's kind of where we are now in the electronic process they paid the fee they filed their application. But nothing has been finalized quite yet. But the evaluation has been started. Yeah. yeah. Let's go to the next uh, screen. Okay. Uh, and then we can come back. Okay, so go ahead and select. Uh, uh, we're almost done. Uh, do you want to? See? Okay. So, you want to see the evaluation report? Absolutely. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the chart, the evaluation report. And I get to okay. This is your evaluation That's report. your evaluation report? I went through it and let me. <laughs> can you go back? I can go back. It's re evaluating right now all the rules, just like. Are there any other notification mechanisms built into this so that we would know that we are out of compliance for anything other than the school distance? Before we get to the screen with all greens or reds, no. There's there mm -hmm. there are well, this is where it's first evaluated. Okay. So the, there are the some doesn't know it. There's some logic in some of the fields, like for example, yes. Yeah. If you uh, say you have an LTE, LTE, if you do, mm -hmm. that can get a permit on And there's some other fields where it doesn't allow you to input invalid information. Um, so yeah, some data check. Yeah, a simple one can't go from five hours. Uh -huh. uh, there's other emissions in there that will limit you so to ensure that you don't put in. If they find a school, you know, they'll tell you. Right. And say we completed the whole process and by mistake, you know, I put 10 nozzles instead of 8. I can always call the engineer, right? And just let them know whoever's in charge. Of it, cause will it tell you what engineer is in charge of your of the process? The engineer, I, I don't know what the engineer's initials for this process is, but I think it's something like online permitting. So there's no human being to, to call. This is online permitting. But I mean, but that's that's change. why you, you can change. Change. At, at, at this point, you can change it. Yeah. Once you click, we're coming up to a point where you click a button and says, okay, okay. I'm done. Yeah. Yes. This is what I want. Once you do that, you get a permit. Yes. Now you have a permit. If you want to change a permit, it's just like changing permit has always been. You need to submit an application. And it's a permit to operate. Right. Okay. Yeah. Can you can you go to the evaluation report? So. <coughs> this is the evaluation report, which shows everything: background, history, cancer risk assessment. Um, MICR values, modeling assumptions, risk calculations, all the calculations are shown here. a little bit slow. This is for the files on, right? This is for the files. You can, you can, you can get a copy of it if you this want. This is emailed to you, right? This is not. Not an evaluation report. Everything else. This is, goes in our files. Oh, I see. Okay. And this is where you can also check the emission factors. 
So does the applicant have access to that, to the evaluation online? Yes, yeah. yeah, no, that's it. And you can print it out at that time? Uh, you can, or, you, or can do a, you can do a print from, from your browser. Yeah. It's in your browser, so. Mm -hmm. um, everything is in here if you want to take a look at it. Okay. Including your conditions. This is an exact replica of what an engineer generates when they do their evaluation and the report. So we've mimicked it completely mm -hmm. so that it has everything in it. And uh, you go through. And but instead of having a, a real Randy, you know, do the calyx, yeah. instead of drawing to Randy, you know, <laughs> that does the calyx for us. Who is non responsive? <laughs> I talked to Randy yesterday. I'd love to meet him. Yeah. 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 If there are any rural evaluation that had failed or anything like this and the application comes in the house, you can call Randy then because he's going to get the application anyway. So, <laughs> so. Okay. Now next is going to take you to the uh, what, submission step. Yep. And what happens here is this is this is your last your last chance. Right. Should we make that in like thirty point font? We're happy to increase the font, but in red, whatever you need. I think it should because you're going to get lots of consistency. Yeah. <laughs> Read, well, fine, read fine print. Or a warning or an exclamation. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, caution. Right. Just something that, right. you know, because yeah. you're looking at this and you're processing a bunch of them. Well, you know, yeah, we don't want to call yeah. somebody in an epileptic fit by having a flash. <laughs> <laughs> no, but a little warning. There's a pop-up. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll increase the font. And put yeah. the font size or... I mean, that is one thing that we found out when we did the drive cleaner module is that clients were telling us to our face mm -hmm. We don't read anything on the screen. Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. saying. People yeah. don't tend yeah. to read. So. And that's why, that's why you see this one in bold, because we thought that was something that wasn't on the original screen, but we'll have to do something else. And wow. no, to me, is like, hey, we're oh, trying yeah. to change okay. something. There's, there's another one. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't this is right. your, before it was next to the last. Oh, okay. yeah. This is your last chance. All right. Yeah. It says, are you sure? Yes. <laughs> Note that it says alert. Yeah, that's good. Then. <laughs> so go ahead and say yes. Uh, what, what, what happens now is that for for these four forms, um, all the information that you entered on all of the screens mm -hmm. is now being used to generate the actual report form. Uh, P PDFs are being generated. They're going to be checked into our document management system. Uh, the forms are going to be generated for your review and approval, um, and they're actually a copy is going to actually be sent to your email address. Um, so it's going to take just a. It says a few minutes, but that's just so that you'll be delighted to know that it'll be a few seconds. <laughs> um, it should take about what? Forty seconds. About so. Mad. I count faster than you do. I said sixty. You said forty, but. It, it's somewhere in there, but right now for these four forms, they're actually scrape, uh, taking all the information from all your data entry, from all your data entry screens, and ah, it's done. Now you can continue to submit. Now that they're generated. Now they're generated, you can continue to submit. The check-in and distribution process is going to take place. It's going to open up our uh, reporting portal. Give you access to review all of the forms. Mm -hmm. Come on, stage. Almost there we go. So these are now all your master copies of record. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know. So for each of these forms, you have to certify that you've read them. Okay. You agree that you've read the document. What's the point of that? Lawyers. 
Lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a form of a... It's like initial in each page, right? Yeah. right. Like initial in each yeah, page. Yes. Okay. You read it. Not that you could go back and change it. That's your SQL form right, right here. And, you can and review it's, everything that you've entered. And I guess it's an assurance. So that people don't dry lab, you know, the forms, you know, just for the sake of getting a permit. And it basically tells you, you know, hey, this is what you have submitted, you know, is this accurate? And it's your attestation that it is, you know. You want to go back up? To where? Oh, right there. Just because um, on the tanks, mm -hmm. um, sometimes we change, like, say, a mid grade to um, ethanol. So it used to have a spot where they, like, remove the tank or, like, remove. It, I don't see that option. It, it, if this was an option, there would have been an option at the data entry level. Then you would have been when when you when you enter. Okay, so it does have that option. Then. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it is. Yes, I think Randy checked this stuff, so he knows. Okay. <laughs> so, and I, I wasn't trying to understand whether you you want to have the option if you are using a blend. You mean the ethanol well, blend? Well, we'll use the same. Um, we typically do the mid grade tank. Mm -hmm. We'll convert it to an ethanol tank. Okay. All right. So, before, yeah. you go back and check. Okay. So, so did you did you check them all? That's an action yeah. item for you guys. Yeah. Right, right. It may be there already. You know, it's just the problem. Probably. It probably is. Right? When we have yeah. notification. Yeah, I remember a removal. I don't. Okay. You have to certify that who are, you are who you are, and you haven't changed your password and all that kind of stuff, and you haven't given your password to anybody else. I am. And I agree to that, yes. and then you. Submit your report, and uh, essentially you're done. Uh, you will get, be taken back to the application. Well, you basically so you're still in the application, but you're in the reporting portal portion. Right. So you kind of go back to your dashboard. And if you actually wanted to do some more data entry, and here we usually just kind of just talk so and. Just make sure we give a couple seconds to let make sure everything is in here. So, no, no, but I mean, we're just <laughs> talking and giving everything a little chance to get to our email so that when we go over to the email, you'll see that everything is submitted. Yeah. And you will receive an email shortly. Somebody can ask a question or something now, but go ahead and see if it's there. So, so here, uh, emails that we've just received, your Right here, this is the we got first a payment one. receipt. This yeah. is your this is your receipt from the uh, from the payment that, you, that we said you get get that email earlier on. So you have that in your inbox. And this is the fact that earlier on you received an, uh, a report that says you're you're ready to review and submit your report. So you get an email about that as well. Because sometimes you may be just halfway, leave the application, come back later, so you know where you're at. Right. And we've been asked to go back and look and rethink all of the various emails and letters and things that are sent. So we'll, we'll do that. Because you actually, yeah, stuff you, will come up in just a second. Yeah, Sorry. if you, no, if you actually create a new login and registration and create a new facility ID and go from end to end, I think you probably have about what? Seven emails, emails yeah. when you finish the process. So we were told to, you know, just go back and take a look at the whole process and see maybe if we wanted to kind of rethink some of it. And this is your permit. There what? it is. And we click on it. This is your permit. Suitable for framing, yeah. Everything. This is your permit number up here. Hi. Everything is given. <laughs> you have a question. Yes, I have a question. Okay. So, throughout the process, are they, you know, is the applicant referred to or given the contact information of who to contact in the unlikely event that the program has a problem or they encounter a problem or they can't afford? Are they given a contact? Number or are they just given the 396 2000 number 
There was a there was some contact information, I believe. It's an email. It's an email. It's an email. Um, and we'll get back to you. So you you make a note. You know, you'll send us through the email, uh, whatever the issue is, and we'll get back to you. Yeah. Anytime. But they're talking about everything: call centers, chat rooms, yeah. everything. So. And that process is as those electronic permitting tools start to become more popular, we probably would have to work on that, um, uh, what do you want to call it? Customer uh, support. The customer support process, you know, and and we'll do whatever needs to be done because we suspect, you know, and expect, you know, at the initial phases, you know, there'll be questions. Um, and and at the initial stage of fishing, actually, we are willing, no, we don't do change on more than willing to handhold it. You know, in fact, we are going to be looking for some volunteers before we go 100% uh, live. We'd love to have some volunteers who would like to experiment with this and get their actual permits. We'll come to your side, or if you want to come to our side over here, and we'll insert the data together, and we'll print you know, the permit right there and then. Um, and we want to go through um, uh, those trials and errors. And after some initial period, uh, if we are 100% convinced that uh, we are ready to go live, then we'll be able to, to do that with everybody else. So I don't know how many, um, can I ask you, you know, uh, normally in any given year, uh, how many permit applications you would put through for your own facilities? By the way, uh, this one is available not just to brand new stations, but I also be able to use this tool to modify your existing permits. Because unlike the... Again, administrative change, maybe? Or what? No, even uh, modifications uh, of your permit. Yeah. Because... You want to change your tanks, you want to change your nozzle. Oh, you do that. okay. No, right. yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it has the E, um, the, more, right. the E11 and then the... See, with your, our other two tools the ga for the gas stations and the other body um, uh, spray booths, we don't have that ability. Uh, the tool is available on to run new installations. But because we have been capturing your data, your old data electronically, mm -hmm. and we allow these databases to be populated, we can use that information to also allow modifications of your existing permits. Okay. So I don't know. Uh, what do you think? Maybe I should turn it over to you guys. And I realize that uh, Randy's a great guy. Yeah. Is uh, compared to our other permits, these permits typically you know glide a lot faster in a matter of days, weeks, you know, if not months. Um, but with this one, I mean, literally, if you have all your information uh, together, you'll be able to do this in, in an hour. Yeah, it's um, just scary because you need to be like. Very accurate. True. Uh, that, that, but but if, you, true. If, you, if you start, to, what Lockie's saying is, if you, and, and they did do it with, with, with our dry cleaners too. Mm -hmm. uh, if the next time you have a permit mod or or a new permit, be let them know. Yes. And, yeah. And, yeah. and like I say, they, they will literally come out yeah. and and walk you through it before you can come down here and, and, and do the same thing. Yeah. I mean, and it helps to test, test the system too. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> We are looking at this as a learning experience even for us, you know, and because this is going to be an iterative process. Uh, all the tools that we develop eventually will have to be, will get improved uh, moving forward, but we need to have that live feedback so that we yeah. know what to work on and how to improve things moving forward. So anyhow, uh, I don't know, what do you guys think? Uh, well, we do a lot, of, a lot of application, um, but like I said, a lot of them go through Randy. Okay. So, um, yeah, but Randy's on his way out. <laughs> no, we better not be. Uh, he's not there. He doesn't know yet. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'd say like about 20, including change of ownerships, I want to say like more than 20 applications a year. Really? Yes. Okay. So we, we're doing a lot of like um, conversions from mid grades or diesel to ethanol. Uh -huh. So we're doing a lot of those still. Okay. Okay. And then now we're doing um, I see. the whole oh. um, 
you know the single walls that need to be taken out. Oh, yeah. So we're going to be doing that too. Okay. Yeah. You want to give them a volume well, discount? Yeah. Well, <laughs> actually, I think we should be able to work on, uh, with you on this. Then. Okay. How about you? Uh, Likewise, we've got some some stuff in the pipeline. That I can't quite talk about yet, but okay. I can give you one example that happened this week where we had an inspector that came out to the station and they noticed that we had a permit to construct and we had not yet put that equipment out yet. Uh -huh. And you know, there's a timeline, right? So we have to revert back. To the right, have a year basically to construct. Right, and so this was actually where I got on the phone with Randy, okay. and you know, it was just a quick "got it, no problem" thing, right? Okay. But we need to revert back to an old permit or something like that where we have to resurrect an old number. Is this something that the system will be able to do? Yes, yes. And then also Not system wise. You still have to call Randy at this point, but yeah, you uh, system uh, resurrecting all numbers has to be done manually at this point. Okay. Well yeah. we could have also given you an extension if you're still gonna be thinking of doing it like Within like six months or yeah, no, you gotta give our timeline attention. is too far out. Oh, so it's it's past that point. So I was just wondering, you know, different functions that you're looking at rolling out in the future with this online system, which, by the way, we think is fantastic. Mm -hmm. We're really excited about this. Yeah. Um, you know, when I asked my team specifically, I said, "Hey, folks, if this is what's happening, let me know if you have any feedback." One of my team members specifically said, "Well, what about renewals and invoices? You know, can we lump it together? Well, you know, they issue them in clusters." Paperwork, are we going to be able to do that and pay online as well? So I just wanted to kind of throw that out okay. there as well. Okay. Um, Actually, renewals and invoices yeah. are already online. Yeah. yeah. As you long as you have an invoice, number, you, have an invoice online, you can pay it online. You can, we're, we're working on sending you the invoice online too, but it's not there yet. Right. But it's it's already available for you to pay online. But they're uh, getting it one permit at a time. That's right. I think it, one, yeah. Where are you asking whether we can bundle things together sure. yeah. and do it all at once? And so yeah, no, no. If all the invoices are there, you can pay for all of them at the same time, as long right, as they're generated. You have to enter each invoice each number no. at a time. Yeah. No, when you get into our website, you can just select your ID and put, give us one invoice only, and they will list all available invoices for you, and you can pay all of them at the same time. Uh, for that site. For that site. Yeah, so per site. Per site. Yeah. Like we have a lot of sites. That okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so that would have there we are not quite there. Yeah. We gotta do. One side at a time. Sure. Piece of it. Yeah. But you know, it's really important that you guys let us know. I mean, our, our CIO, our agency is committed to building our e-commerce right now. Mm -hmm. It's permitting. Registration equipment is coming next. We're doing transportation plans. We're doing we're doing 1403. The type of things that you need, the type of support that you need, we need to hear from you right now, mm -hmm. so that we can start building what you need. As we're building the applications, we need to build the support in the business process as well. So You're please, start registering just, just let us know what yes. you need. Yes, and expanding that. Support. Yes, uh, oh, that's one. We want to do it by within the next twelve months. Less you'll than see, less than probably twelve I think, months. I think less we are going to do all the two to two filings, registrations in electronic. Right. I mean, that's that's the goal. Aki, okay. yes. you had a question from John. Yes. Um, on the where you said that there were. Uh, you could modify permits that mm -hmm. are exist. Right. If they were created before the system, will they be available online? Great question. Uh, before the system. So you're rolling out this new electronic permitting system. You know, oh, yeah. For this? Oh, right. absolutely. So the yeah. 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 Right. yeah, yeah, Unless they are prehistoric, which do we even have? No. no. Everyone. They've all already gone through tank code. replacement, yeah. all that stuff. Really so, yeah. And then um, I haven't actually used the uh, IQ let's say personally. Okay. So um, when you create that username and the login, can you see all of your facilities right there, or do you need a new username for each facility? Yeah, how do we link it to the data? No, you, you can link as many facilities as you want to a user ID. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, let me ask you the same question. Uh, normally, you live here, how many new permits or permit modifications do you go to? Uh, unfortunately, I'm not the person that comes Okay. To all right. Question, all. So. Again, uh, the invitation, the open invitation, right. you know, at like Well, it's, we're, we're excited to take advantage of that. We're already yeah. going through a process with one right now. Right. I just couldn't get through that. That's fine. That's okay. Uh, that's okay. Cool. Absolutely. Uh, we travel. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we let's do it. Let's try it. You know what? I'm, we're more than willing to come, like, because I know we have still some coming up. We can work yeah. on this with Randy or whoever is yeah. available. We'll do it here at the, yeah. we'll have a kiosk here and we can bring our computer down and you'll yeah, bring I'm your, not, your I'm data with you.
Yeah. So, come out to your um, facility and do a little oh, laptop. Oh, then that'd be, that'd be better. Can <laughs> I answer to your question? When you're logged in, and this, you are, you're logged in right now. Um, oh, I see this the login is associated. Yeah, this is your login right here, and it's associated associated right now with this facility. Mm -hmm. But if you click on this drop down, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> when you go to here, here you can add new facilities. I see. You can, uh, you know. Add new facilities to this, I mean, you, you, they'll be listed here, all of them that you're that you're working. Yeah. Oh. By the way, so I know initially it's a little bit scary because it's brand new, uh, and even though the tool comes with instructions in each and every page, um, there are also, if you go to our website with respect to the, uh, the, uh, the dry cleaners and the automotive spray, automotive spray booths, we have instructions that general instructions, you know, just introducing you to the program, FAQs, frequently asked questions, and as we get more feedback, probably we'll be expanding those. So there are a number of tools that will help you uh, through the process, and like I said, you know, we'll always make ourselves available, at least at the initial phase of the introduction of this. So hopefully, you know, that fear factor will come down over time, and I think once you experiment with this once or twice, it will be pretty straightforward. So. A quick question about one of the final steps, right, where you said it's because of the lawyers that we have to yeah. agree that we've read every page. Right. I understand some method, the CYA mechanism on your end. You know, yeah. if we read something and we don't like what we read, or for whatever reason something wasn't transposed correctly, or right. what's, do we then go to the email to find the phone number and then get on the phone? Yes. Before we certify that it's correct and that we are who we say we are. Uh, so long as you're not at the point of no return. Yes. Well, that's after the point of no return. Uh, after the point of no return. Well, you can still contact. Because I can, I can, I can click that I've read it, but if it's incorrect, right? If it's incorrect, then if it's an error on our side. We'll take care of it, yeah, okay. and you contact us, obviously. Right. But, but look, the important one is you got to reach your conditions, your permit. You know, you got to be able to live with those. Those are the most sure. important ones. That the stations, I don't want to say that they are unimportant, but they're almost you know forms that we all sign. You know, and typically you know we don't read, but the conditions you got to be able to live with them, and you never go past that. You know, if there is something that is incorrect, there. how many people read terms? Exactly. On the internet. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I do. One should. Yeah, that's why they hired me. Yeah. That, you know, I, I mean, okay. so I'm just making sure, right? I, sure. When I go back to my team to explain what this is, yeah. and then when our lawyers say, you right. know, I just want to make sure that I'm communicating it. And Got it. If we run into any hiccups, because obviously we're working together, it spills mm -hmm. out. So mm -hmm. I just want to make sure. Yeah. So you have the same yeah. responsibility that you do right now uh, with this new system. Uh, I mean, you're, you're not. She's not getting any, any additional responsibility on this. Correct. Yeah. Correct. No. Correct. Yeah. 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 So uh, this is our first year round, you know. So we got three of our equipment um, where we develop online tools, and uh, so, like my wonderful gentleman uh, said, you know, we are trying to move our permitting from the paper form, from paper processing into the electronic um, uh, format. And we'll try to expand uh, those tools. Uh, we won't be able to do them with all our permits. Uh, we work with a lot of refineries, with a lot of large facilities where decision trees are extremely complex to translate into computer language. But So with respect to some of them, we'll always have to do on paper forms. But for the simpler type of processes and equipment, we think this is going to be a win-win uh, solution for both sides, for both parties. And then we're able to print it, right? I mean, just I the this one is going to come to your email address, right? And you print it. So you know, when we would originally get the originals in the mail, right? We hold on to those in-house, like they're yes. old, and then we get copies of the stations. Is this irrelevant now, since we're still able to print it? Is there yeah. still going to be an original? No. Yeah. Uh, well, it'll it'll just that part won't be on because every single one you print. Will be original now. There will be one in our um, corporate database that we consider the original document. Right. And so, if there's any question, whatever you have at your site will be compared to whatever is in right. our 
system. So, you print whatever you know comes through your mailbox, you know, and that's basically what you post, you know, next to your equipment. And you can print as many as you want. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You can wallpaper your yeah. yeah, exactly. I have a question for Bill. Um, do you think you'll ever go to electronic payments? No, we won't. We'll be precluded. I mean, even though this one doesn't matter to us anymore. I mean, we've removed all our gas stations, but they're pulling back all our ability to pay by electronic methods from the from the sites. They're trying consolidating it all back back east, and so they're taking all that away from us. So, so it shows, well, do they pay electronically? Yeah, they pay electronically. Okay. But the issue is there's no way to have the person <laughs> filling out the work it. So to be able to do something like this, to be able to use something like this, we'd end up having to pay, pay one of our contractors to have to use a credit card and then pay them six, seven percent. So not not necessarily, Bill, sorry, uh, just to let you know, uh, any registration that you create with that facility ID, if headquarters create registration, another, you know, whoever the finance person creates a login and associate that facility ID, he will be able to see that application that he created, they will be able to pay there. But they, but that's what I mean though, they, they have, have nothing, they, all they culture. see, like, they yeah, have no saying, knowledge of any of this information. Right. I mean, so they have to let them know that you have a permit yeah. waiting to be paid. They can pay it, then you can continue. That right. kind of so stuff. That's, that's the yeah. process. So should I be concerned about my polling stock? <laughs> <laughs> no, they just view it, they, they just view it as they're giving all our payment systems to Wells Fargo, and they're just oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. the old Wells Fargo. <laughs> the truth comes back. I guess the new okay. Wells Fargo. Fake accounts. Huh? There. Well, I guarantee, Bill, you have a, a lot more accounts than you think. You do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, yeah, so it's, that's why I was asking if there's the ability to generate. Is that something that's needed? An invoice from that. So I know Sand District has the same issue. We do have some issues. So, so, I mean, would it be a good thing to be able to generate an invoice? Well, we think it would be, I mean, if, if the desire is to get to electronic, and, and it's no different than we get from other agencies. I mean, we go in and input a lot of data, and then an invoice is generated, and then we pay it, and then we get the well, permit. Let me ask, so, I, so we, there's an invoice there, invoice screen. Uh, is this something that you can capture and send to your headquarters? And right, that's how we it? pay stuff now. We generate through the other system. We generate and they pay an what, invoice, credit card, or and they pay they pay by check. By, by check, yeah. by e check, e check or check? Check, paper check. Mm -hmm. paper check. I mean, they paper send check. paper check directly to the district. Okay. I mean, that's their pro that's their process right now. You know, we can probably take this conversation offline with you specifically okay. and see if we can work something out. Yeah. yeah. And so, and there's others. Is it the same thing with you guys? So, Similar. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How about you guys? How do you think? Thanks for asking. Uh, <laughs> my credit card has a limit to it, and so I'd only be able under this to do two or three a day if that were the case. Um, but because of the e check capability, I would be able to convince the right people to allow us to use that function. Okay. But. We are also doing paper checks, and we're also pushing that to a third party. So, mm -hmm. and because this is so sensitive, and right now I've got a couple contractors that send me the paper form, so I'm like, this is incorrect, this is incorrect, and I have to sign it. Uh -huh. I'm not comfortable giving anyone access to this to submit anything on our behalf. Got it. So that's another layer. Obviously, a business practice we need to consider, right? Um, but. <laughs> 17 warnings or not, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Whoever yeah. your pilot is, yeah. you got to trust them. So. Right, right, right. How about you guys? We do our submitting and we pay for it. Okay. There's no okay. issues with that. Okay. okay, good to know. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Uh, yes, ma'am. We have other modules already out there. Just, just right? the I think the dry clear right. yeah. is right. already live. Yes. Um, what has been the feedback? What have you found? from the people that are using the, those modules? How many applications have uh, you gotten in, and what has been the feedback? With the, with the dry cleaner module, well, um, actually they like it, you know, the ones who... who well, they love it. it. So they have the they, same fear. 
you know, they're, they're kind of scared to push the button, <laughs> but it's pretty amazing when you can get a permit in 45 minutes, oh, yeah. and especially for something that's modular, like a dry cleaning machine that's pre-built, um, that's a very big yeah. advantage. Did, so did you guys just ever address the issue of, uh, what was it, a gallon a day for the, right. for the spray roof folks? So, uh, for this go around, uh, we are stuck with that one gallon because what we are trying to assure is that the risk at the nearest receptor stays below the one in a million. And with the one gallon and the other assumptions, it, it assures us that uh, they'll be safe and they'll be able to print their permit online. If they want to negotiate, you know, a higher uh, throughput, they can do that. What they'll have to do is they'll have to basically submit everything to us electronically, and we'll probably have to run um, a tier three model uh, for risk analysis rather than the tier two that the uh, system, the program relies on. And we'll have to ask basically, you know, the uh, more detailed information about the uh, toxic compound content of their paints, and if it's lower than what the uh, program assumes, we'll be able um, to basically arrive at a much higher throughput. But unfortunately, there'll have to be some communication between the applicant and the engineer, so he won't be able to do it online. Now, as we work in the next generation of that program, we may be able to enhance the level of sophistication <coughs> and allow some of those variables to be a little more fluid. But what we have at hand right now, we are basically stuck with that one gallon. And we realize that may not be large enough for some of the bigger guys, you know, the larger dealers, but. Um, uh, it will still be a useful tool for the smaller guys. The guys who use, for instance, you know, just one spray booth right, in the facility. And there are quite a few of them. You know, so. Yeah, there are. But you, you've got, in, in that particular industry, you've got a lot of consolidation going on. Yes. Uh, and the the, 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 the formerly the, the family-owned business with the A spray booth. Right. Uh, there, for a variety of reasons, you, you guys included. Uh, they're seeing that it's just not an economic business model. And, right. Uh, but these folks don't have MSCS sheets, but Correct. the spray booth guys do. Right. So. Do you have MSCS sheets? Do you? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Car washes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. yeah. Your car washes. Yeah. 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 They are a little more straightforward because uh, for gasoline purposes, you know, we know what the mixture is, you know, and uh, the calculation, the toxicity calculation and risk analysis a little more straightforward with the um, auto body spray booths because they use a variety of different coatings, variety of different vendors, and the toxicity content, I mean, the toxic compound content of each bank can vary widely, you know, so uh, the program has to make certain assumptions, conservative assumptions, to assure that that facility remains less than one in a million at the nearest receptor. It may, that may actually shortchange a little bit the user, but they don't have to live with it. You know, if they want to get a higher throughput figure, they'll just have to uh, communicate that uh, those different variables, you know, with the uh, permit engineer. Because yeah, I, ha I had a board meeting the other day, and uh, that came up yeah. uh, from yeah. their industry. It uh, registered. Yes. It, it registered with us, and yeah. uh, we are going to be working with our uh, partners in IAM to on the uh, second generation uh, to give a little more flexibility, you know, to play with some of those variables. And the other thing that we can do, frankly, is uh, if we can work with some of the associations to put some pressure on the coating vendors to drop down some of the toxic compound content. It's ethylene benzene, basically, that is the uh, main driver. And there are vendors that offer products with no ethylene benzene content, and there are some who still use ethylene benzene. So, so see, yeah, they, these people, you know, they, they don't buy 
a gallon of paint from Bayer or right. EVG or Cardinal or uh -huh. something like that. I mean, they get they get the whole system, mm -hmm. right? So you know, from yes. base coast primer from base coast yeah. primers all right. the yeah. way through. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, it, but again, given the flexibility uh, that these programs offer, it will be a major selling point uh, if we can persuade the vendors to drop down some of those uh, undesirable constituents of uh, in the paint. So now, if they're uh, if they can't live with the one gallon, with the one gallon, then. You said negotiate that. So yeah. That means so they, they can still uh, they can still insert the information in, uh, and um, and it will come to the engineer, and the engineer will basically try to figure out based on the input that they're going to get uh, receive from uh, from the applicant uh, uh, the toxic compound content, uh, the distance to the nearest receptor. Maybe we'll have to run you know the more sophisticated. Um, uh, air quality model, which again is a little more forgiven than the one that we have inserted in the program. We use tier two. I don't know whether that means anything to you guys, but it's a very simplistic model, but uh, it's a little bit um, uh, more conservative. The tier three model uh, is not in the program yet because it's a lot more sophisticated, it needs a lot more programming, a lot more computer time. But again, it's something that perhaps we can introduce at the next reiteration of um, the system. So they need to call up. That is. They need to call up. We can still do it. Right. You know? okay. We'll have to do it manually. Okay. You know, most European countries, they're already banning coatings with toxic compounds. So most of the cars that are being painted in European countries, they don't, use, they don't have any toxins, toxics in them. So it's just a matter of see if we can force or provide some incentive for our manufacturers because they're already producing. It's not a different company. It's the same company. It's just that they're having a different product for here versus uh, overseas. But so much has been formulated out of coding, like inks, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and even architectural coding. And if yeah. they can do UV, mm -hmm. yeah. that would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky with the, the, the NOV parameter. That's the NOV for the permit unit, for the facility. Is there a dis dis distinguish? That's what it is. So if you have something that you have a violation elsewhere at the facility has nothing to do with this, you can't budge. Is that consistent with permitting in general? Yeah. Yeah. If you have an open end of you know, it's a standard question that we ask in the program right? Right. Uh, so and if you check yes, it goes it gets shallowed, unfortunately. And, and up until you I mean literally if you have a permit application for anything, mm -hmm. even by paper. You're not able to process until you resolve yeah. the end of it? Or probably, you know, we'll start processing. We want to issue the permit. We cannot. Right. We, issue. we start processing. We'll just wait for the NOV to be set. Okay. I think or we have a separate to uh, uh, enforcement to discussion as far as yeah. that hanging out yeah. things, that that's yeah. going to become a problem. Yeah. And it's not really, you know, it's just not compliance. It also, it also goes with the general counsel's office. Because they are the, the ultimate group that... Closing. And it may be embedded in the state law, too. Well, yeah, I think there is a provision like that. Gee, for big guys like you, that could be a big problem. Yeah. Well, if you have a large facility and you have some yeah. ticky tack violation, <laughs> yeah. that stops everything. Yeah, yeah. everything else. Well, that's also yeah. built into our 1303 <coughs> yeah. I think. Such as a major facility, if you have an NOV, we stop right there. Yeah. <laughs> and then so you have to wait for the inspector to come back around to clear it and then clear it with the agency, and then that's how we would move forward. Yeah, it, the, the agency will clear it. Yeah. Well, the, I was curious because I thought the actual 408 form said for this equipment, not for the site. Right, so we look at both. We know why is the ticket was issued? Is the ticket was issued for this piece of equipment, and is, or is it because a lot of times we may, we may issue a ticket because you don't have a permit for this piece of equipment. I mean, then we don't issue a ticket per se originally. You know, we usually give you a notice to comply, and if you don't respond to a notice to comply, then there is a ticket issue. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, so you know, it, makes, it becomes a little bit more complicated. At that point, so we, we decided that you know we're going to bring them in because a lot of time filing of the application will resolve the ticket issue. Well, right, but I I guess 
because this one seems to be a more general statement on your form here. But right. The, it's the same. The actual paper. Statement. I, it's the same statement with the, whatever we have in the paper form, it's the same uh, statement. I didn't see that this one said for this equipment. I thought it just said for NLD. Um, I think it says, I think you may be right, but I mean, the idea is if you have an NOV, it's going to come in house, whether it's for this equipment or any other NOV. So you'll, you'll have to deal with an engineer anyway. But that's my question. I mean, because the 400A form specifically states for this equipment. So if you don't have an NOV associated with the equipment you're doing online, I mean, should it really, should it really say that? Okay, well, you're giving us a good point. Let's make a note just to make sure you know that. No, we are right here. Yeah, yeah, you know, make sure that your form, rules apply correctly. Right? I mean, that's right. not right because I thought any NOV will not give you will not allow you to get a, get a permit online anyway. Right. So, yeah, right. I'm just trying to. Yeah, I thought it. If I remember correctly, it's set for this mm -hmm. for this equipment that you're filing right. the application. Yeah, the application is filed, but when we Can't go process. through the permitting, the one last thing that we do is go in there and check and see is there any open NOVs. Oh, but that's a different issue. I'm just talking about right. if it, how the, the form the compared is correct, to the... Right, so we can check the form, make sure it's... Yeah, I'm, ju I'm just trying to see that this mirrors what's on the... Yes, yes, yes. That, that will double check. That's right. and it should. That there is, yeah. yeah, that's totally different. Right, okay. I know that. So, and, so I have... And, sorry, this is one subtlety here is that normally you have multiple permits. Most of the answers you normally have multiple permits. So if there's an NOV, is that equipment? Okay, but I'm thinking of this more in the how it's going to be for yes. as it gets to other equipment and things like that. So mm -hmm. I, I had a general question. Um, so when you're set, when you go in initially and you're setting up an account, mm -hmm. so I, I assume I mean if you're a brand new site, that it's matching against addresses when you tell it to create a new facility ID. Yes. Okay. The, the application checks your address. First of all, it checks the, your address against the SBS uh, data uh, to see whether it's a valid address or not. And then after it's being justified as a valid address, it comes against our database to see whether that address exists in our database. And if it does, then it pulls up a list of facility IDs with their names that will, and will ask you, is this one of your facilities? Is this your facility? And if it okay. is, then you can select it. If not, you can create a new facility at that point. And my other question is, when you when you create your so your personal account, so do you just identify the facility IDs you want associated with it, or not at the time of creation? When you create your personal account, that's your account for you to to work to deal with the district in general. Okay. But then if you want to use the S application, you have to associate that with uh, a facility ID to work with. So that's my question. Is there any reason, can somebody go in and just... Create an account? Create, no, create an account, but then can they just link... Yeah. Can they mess with this? Uh, they can, they can create an account to your facility and submit an application and pay for you on your behalf. Yeah. I mean, you know. <laughs> and they're certifying that they are who they are, representing who they are, so there's not be a fraudulent admission on their behalf, right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah that's. Okay, it's real and and that's Bill, we examined this. Okay. Question. Now you answer. You know why? So we are having all these wrong, right? right? And that they're. I mean, and the unlikely like event that if somebody wants to no, apply for it's it's their own like account, personal account. They would have yeah, to do that association. Oh, but that's not what I was thinking of. What I was thinking of, the ability of somebody else to go in and look at oh, uh, oh, Snoop. The information. No. Oh, no. no. Currently, after the application is submitted, nobody can see the data right now. Except you have to look at it through Find or anything. Whatever okay, you so at. online you can't. You no. can't look at it after it's submitted. If it's open and it's halfway through, you're processing something, then yeah, you, you can go in and just you know look at it, but it hasn't been submitted. Now, one thing to, to, to recognize is that these facilities typically, typically are minor sources. They're all minor sources. So <clears throat> if you're a major source, you won't be using this system because Initially. you, you have, will have a different layer of security. Um, security. security. Yeah. Okay. The questions would be a lot more detailed. Yeah. yeah. 
I but have, I'm sorry, I yes. have a question. Too. Yes, sure. In regards to, um, say, um, I'm trying to modify um, a previous owner and I already submitted the change of ownership. Yes. Do I still need to wait for that change of ownership to go through before I can start the the process of the modification? Uh, if you've already submitted it, yeah. Uh, we have probably started the process. I just I was think like, a change of ownership would be very easy to yeah, integrate yeah, into yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. The program doesn't handle change of property practice. Okay. okay. But yes, you have to finish that before you can be able to right. do a modification. Okay. Because this program pulls from the existing data in our database, and before the change of operator is complete, we don't have that data in the database. Uh, don't worry, it goes uh, very quick, right? Very, you know, very quick. Even, uh, yeah. The uh, problem, the problem I've encountered with the change of ownership is that sometimes the previous owner has like changed like, name, yes. and so they've added a new facility. Uh -huh. So I tend to go by the previous facility that they had, which is the current permit that they current um, permit that they gave us. But sometimes that permit has been inactive and it was changed. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem I encounter. Yeah, that's that's a due diligence question. Yeah. Yep. And we, we don't, we can't reach back and determine that. So I wish like there was something that prompted, okay, uh, the location, say you're putting in the address, and it will give you the most um, current permit. Yes, there is one. You can go to a fine program. No, because it, it pulls up, it'll say like you have to go like by name, but I don't think you could do it by address. Oh, you can, you can search by address. No, you can't, but like, um, it doesn't give you like specific, is what I'm saying. Because I do, I do use that find <coughs> thing, and um, that's how I, like, say a police owner doesn't give us the current <coughs> permit, so I use that find thing. But sometimes I grab the one that has been inactive. Right. So, so maybe we just need to add that to a question like that. To present multiple previous yeah. facilities? No, yeah. to multiple yes. to multiple searches on find. Yeah, check it out. Yeah. Yeah. If you can see previous permits and modify them, and you, it's pre filled with the previous information, then it would be a long process. But yes, yeah, someone could theoretically look up a previous permit, say, I'm going to modify it, and then just copy it. I think they'd be really stretching to do that, though. It seems like a pretty time to test that. It's a stretch, I <laughs> guess. You know, we're always... I, I guess what I'm thinking of for other agencies where we're doing this type of work, where they have basically tiers of, of access. Of uh, and yeah. so, like, I might, I might have unrestricted access, but then you can identify that if there's anybody else for your account, then it's, I mean, lesser access, or it's just, it's just, just here, yeah. just because I've been seeing this in the other agencies where we've been inputting stuff online, mm -hmm. where they've gone to that type of. And I don't know whether you're familiar with the Cromer, the federal Cromer system that is up with seen the it. Yeah, large that's large facilities. See, this is Cromer Light, you know, so that stations and everything, we try to get keep them, you know, at the bare minimum, just because we are dealing with minor facilities. Uh, but if we come to the point of sophistication where we can make those tools available to the larger facilities, we we'll probably have to beef up those uh, attestations, you know, to and I'm not create thinking, several additional layers of security. I mean, because we have a lot of, uh, we have quite a few small facilities. I mean, because when I think of stuff like that, I'm thinking more like the CERF system the state system for the emergency response and reporting mm -hmm. chemicals and stuff where they just have, I mean, it's nothing like the feds, but it just has a, a yeah. tiered, tiered users. Mm -hmm. where, so you can basically assign who you want to a facility ID. I mean, they do everything by facility IDs also, and you just have the ability when you create the facility ID, you go in and you identify who's allowed to look at anything on this account. So it's pretty, I mean, yeah, nothing like the Fed system, but it's mm -hmm. pretty straightforward. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Something to think about. Uh, That's all we had uh, for you folks um, uh, today. I hope you found it we'll useful. If we need to repeat it, we can talk to your associations. If uh, we need to repeat the, this, um, and I know I have some takers. Uh, Westpac couldn't be here today, but they'll probably be interested in um, uh, seeing this tool. 
we'll be able to repeat it, um, um, you know, in the not too distant future. Um, there are a few finishing touches that we need to um, put into the program before we go uh, live, but um, we are looking for volunteers. We are ready, man, um, at the stage that the program is in, uh, to actually work with you guys and uh, be able to print those uh, online permits. So, well, I don't know where did this lady go. She's coming back. She's coming back. Yeah. Okay. I, I want to say, you know, make sure that you sign in so that you know that yes. we have you in our official communication. How, how, does, how did they get in touch with you? So, what Whoever. I was going to say to this lady, uh, we want to exchange business cards. Uh, okay. Whenever they are ready, they can give us a call and we'll set up an appointment. So, they call Bill. Whether they want to, yeah, well, it's uh, Billy's team who's going to be handling this. Uh, so, either here or at their facility, at your facility. And uh, we'll do some hand holding, and we are determined to print that permit online, wherever yes. we decide. <laughs> sure, okay. Just, just be ready that there will be a group of six or seven people who will show up. Oh my God! All in shoes, all very That's right. <laughs> That's right. And Please. after we, <laughs> yeah. And after we take it through that those that trial and tribulation, you know, uh, period, you know, then we are going to be able to go 100 percent in life uh, with everybody else. Oh, yeah, we did, did. I don't know if she asked on the why the change of ownership wasn't something that was put in place with this. Mm -hmm. Still, it wasn't part of the original yeah. uh, business requirements, but it okay. is something that we could develop uh, yeah. into Eventually. another phase. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. It should not be that difficult. It, like, yeah, right. That's what we mean. It's yeah. usually pretty yeah. basic. So yeah. we were just yeah. wondering yeah. if that. Well, was sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it, it, and frankly, you know. For us, you know, small business. Yeah. change of operator, you know, is very easy very to process. Easy. So, initially, we don't want to spend money on that. We want to spend money, you know, on actually okay. on this, you know. But now that we know that we have a workable product, okay, yeah, factoring that, that nice. improvement, you know, should be pretty straightforward. Okay. Yeah. Bob, do you have a projected go live when you're shooting for it? Uh, uh, not yet, but. Um, we would like to experiment a little bit for, I don't know, maybe one to three months in that time frame. And after a 90 day time frame, perhaps go live. So we would do like a soft launch, like Lockheed said, with, right. with certain, right. um, certain individuals and then go forward. And you, right. you haven't started with the auto body shops yet because you with have the that, body, you had that we are they, We are looking for volunteers on that too. Because Jason and Linda both yeah. uh, said that, you know, call okay. us. Uh, okay, maybe I, what we can I do is Linda the other day. She was at my board meeting. So. Okay. Uh, send her the message back, you know. We can call her and him, and they can call us. We are ready. We'll go there to their location, or they can come here. Oh, okay. Let's take it. I mean, we got to try, you know, we got to. Yeah. Uh, and see how things go, you know, and then, uh, fine. Yeah, because I know both of them, at, when we had that meeting for them, right. both Jason and Linda said, you know, you can use us, and okay. they would be good because that's, absolutely. What they, that's what they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Anything else, guys? Uh, are we all good? All right. Well, thank you very much for coming, and thank you, Bill, for getting in touch with uh, those folks, you know. Um, I think we are making good progress here yeah, with did. those tools. Thank you. And Thank you. we'll keep in touch. Yes. Okay. <laughs>